This episode is brought to you by our patrons. Thank you so much for being a patron. And if you're not one and you'd like to become a patron, just jump on over to patreon.com slash lunchtime tech talk. Now on with our show. So what's going on, Chad? What are you up to? Just another week in the core. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> I, I hear you. It's got to feel a little bit less uh, quarantine-y for you because you're back in the office today. I, I am in the office today. We'll see what the week holds if I end up back at home or not because, uh, you know, my wife is working too. Um, she's a teacher and she has to video conference during certain points of the day with her kids. So I've been, uh, I have to work more hours during the day, but like when she has to be on, um, I've been kind of wrangling the kids if they need wrangling. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of letting today be a, a full day test day type of deal and then see how it goes (laughs) for her. Yeah. Um, cause the first week that I was here, she hadn't started working yet. Uh, cause they got an extra week of spring break. So she wasn't like, um, back at it. So last week was her first week and it was also my week at home. So yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll see how it goes. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I, I, this is weird. It's getting weird for me, uh, personally. I mean, it's like, I, I don't even know what the office looks like anymore. It feels like I haven't been there in forever. Well, they <laughs> so. changed it, so you really don't know what it looks like anymore. <laughs> yeah, they picked, I, I, the, they picked the whole thing up and moved it three feet to the left. Oh man, I'll never find it. I'll never find it. <laughs> well, uh, so what all? Uh, what all went on in your weekend? Uh, nothing. So instead of weekend talk, I found an interesting fact to share. (laughs) Uh, for the week, for the week ending March 21, alcohol sales went up 55%. So we're all drinking in the (laughs) core. You know, what's really funny is I've actually probably drank less. Like I, I usually have like a beer with dinner or, you know, I, I probably I probably have a beer every other night and maybe a glass of whiskey once a week and uh, I the last several probably the last four or five days I don't know that I've had anything. Yeah. So who knows? I mean, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm screwing up the statistic. All the people who were drinking prior to the quarantine are now not drinking, and the people who were drinking weren't drinking are drinking now. <laughs> It could have been 56%, Mike, but you're just messing it all up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I better I better get a beer tonight then. There you go. Well, that's but. a fun that's a fun fact. So, nothing uh nothing on your weekend. Well, let me tell I you mean, about I mean, it it rained the whole weekend and so oh, it did. For us, we were just we were inside, we didn't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what you call winning at quarantine. So. That's right. <laughs> we crushed the social distancing goal. That's right. So I had a, a pretty epic weekend again with YouTube. Uh, this weekend, probably more so than ever. I am uh, now, last time I checked, which was earlier this morning uh, on Monday here, uh, I was at 350 subscribers, man. I know. That's so crazy. It has gone up like bonkers like on friday i was at what 297 i think and that was friday evening and i man it's it's gone it's gone absolutely crazy it's really cool i've had some people post some really uh, nice comments on my videos and uh, it's really cool but the other thing that i did over the weekend uh I set up a merch store for Run Bike Mike. So you jumped in on that bandwagon and uh, got yourself yeah, some stuff purchased, which is, a, yeah, which is man. super exciting. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty cool. We'll put a link in the in the description if anybody on the podcast is interested in, in checking it out. Just got some shirts that are related to my YouTube channel. And then we did something that you're familiar with, Chad. I was not familiar with this. We played what the layman's call as in me frisbee golf but as the pros call it 
disc golf. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Back when okay, I was in okay. high school, back when I was in high school, we called it froth because Frisbee golf combined. But yeah, so we didn't know what it was called then either. How's your shoulder feel today? Uh, you know what? It's fine. I was real worried about it because that shoulder's already jacked up as it is. Uh-huh. And uh, the first throw did not go well. The first throw was like, this is not going to be a good idea. And then I adapted and I basically changed the way I throw the Frisbee and it, it worked. Um, now, on that note, we were playing with Frisbees, not discs. So, and you could see a huge oh, difference. Oh, so you really did play of... Frisbee golf. <laughs> oh, yes. hundred percent. Yeah. Me, me, the kids and the wife, we, we did not look professional. Luckily, there was only other, one other group on the course and uh, they were more professional. They had the little seats and they had the bags full of discs. And whenever they would throw them, they would actually go more than about 30 feet. They would go about a hundred some feet. So, <laughs> Sure. Yeah. But we had it. We had a ton of fun. It was it was a good time. The the kids liked it, and it was nice just to get out of the house. And plus, that that course is literally two miles from our house. So I'm a big fan of disc golf. So uh, what uh, what topics do you have this week? Um, I have another Robin Hood topic. You know, we talked last week about fractional shares. Yes. And I have another topic to go along with that, and then uh, some some Tesla news. Cool. Uh, hey, before uh, before or after you talk about Robinhood, I wanted to mention something that I heard on a podcast that was interesting to me about Robinhood um, and Apple. So, but uh, my topics are the potential release of an a new iPhone coming up soon and uh-huh. um, the iPhone 12's camera leaks and then I had one other topic I'm trying to remember it off the top of my head and I can't so I'm gonna have to pull up the notes uh, let's uh, see Apple buying something yes that was that's actually kind of a big one yeah so apple bought a company and uh we'll talk about that all right all right let's do it see you on the other side welcome back to lunchtime tech talk i'm chad and i'm mike so Robin Hood, do you want me to tell you my little thing or do you want to tell your little thing first? Mine's really uh, quick. Yeah, give yours. Okay, so I listen to the 9 to 5 Mac podcast, the Happy Hour podcast, and uh, Zach on there, you're probably familiar with him. He uh-huh. he has a prediction that Apple may purchase Robin Hood at some point because it's a perfectly good fit for their type of style and i thought that was really interesting because of a current purchase that they made that um is kind of it's a little bit different and i'll talk about it later but apple doesn't use their own stock uh program for their stock apps they use yahoo finance so purchasing somebody like robin hood would give them the option to do more with their stock stuff. So I thought that was an interesting idea from them. And their app is supposedly really cool. You're probably real more familiar with it than I am, but, but yeah, yeah, it's got it's got a really nice UI and and a lot of handy features. Like I don't I don't ever jump off of their site to go look something up because it's just it's all there. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, if Zach predicts this right. Uh, if uh, Apple gets into the the stock game, that'd be so. interesting. Yes. Um, but yeah, the thing I had. So last week they introduced fractional shares. They had so they've done this a few different times. When Robinhood first first came out, they had like a sign up waitlist program to even start using the the platform, right? And if you if you shared a link and your friends signed up for the waitlist, then like you got moved higher up in the waitlist. 
<clears throat> and so me and one of my buddies were like competing to see who could be highest on the wait list. And we ended up getting invited to come on the same day. So it didn't really matter. But um, the next thing they were announcing like a checking and savings account type of thing that ended up getting pushed back, but they had a, a sign up early and we'll let you know when it's here type of thing for that. And then the fractional shares had the same thing, like sign up, we'll let you know when it's available. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I was talking about it last Monday, um, it had suddenly become available for me. And so after we recorded, I kind of felt bad because I was like, well, I don't know if this is out for everyone. But just a few days later, they announced, uh, they're calling it DRIP, but it's dividend reinvestment. Um, and so the way that works on, like on your 401k or on any other uh, mutual fund ETF, uh, when you get paid dividends from that mutual fund or from that stock, then it buys fractional shares worth however much your dividend dollars were. And so because they now have fractional shares available, now they can also do automatic dividend reinvestment. And you can turn it on and off for different stocks or for the whole platform as a whole. But um, I, I know for a fact it has to be available to everybody now because they offered the dividend reinvestment to everybody. Oh, wow. And so that's pretty cool. So I now have automated reinvestment of dividends when I get paid dividends. Yeah, um, that's that's super handy. I mean, because a lot of times you don't you don't want to have to allocate those or you know get those dividends in. You just want them to go back into more funds. Right. Just keep earning me money. Heck yeah, money, 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 money. So that was that was something uh, kind of cool. Yeah. What else you got? What else do I have? Tesla announced last night in either a live stream or in a video that they dropped, uh, they are, they have a prototype for ventilators for hospitals. Oh, wow. And so th the engineers said they still have a lot of stuff to work through, but they're, it sounds like they're pretty close to maybe starting production. And, you know, with the whole COVID thing, um, all the hospitals are short on ventilators. And so, I know Ford has been talking about it. Uh, GE has been talking about it. Now Tesla has a prototype. And so a lot of these manufacturing companies um, are are trying to get into the ventilator game. So that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's that's it's so crazy that there's so many of them jumping on this. And I mean, hopefully they can produce these things. I mean, the the big hope is that we don't need them, but... The unfortunate outlook on it is it sounds like we probably will need them. So yeah. if we can get well, it's really it's really cool how some of these companies can just change up their focus and push to help a whole bunch of a whole bunch of people, the country, the world, all that stuff. It's 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 kind of motivating. And I would have never thought like six months ago, I would have never thought that that could have been the case because like all of these manufacturing plants are really specified like assembly lines mm -hmm. and so the thought that you can go from making a car to making a piece of medical equipment is crazy to me but yeah i don't i don't know yeah well i say i say that it, it, to me it's it is amazing like what you're saying you know that they can just switch it all up and you know it's good to know that they can do that so like when we have stuff like this happen they can just switch over. Awesome. Good yeah. on them. Yeah. Well, uh, I had a few uh, rumors uh, on the Apple front. Uh, so, you know, the iPhone SE, that is supposedly going to be coming out with a new version of the SE that they're going to possibly call the iPhone 9. We talked about Yay, that. Yay, nine. Yeah. <laughs> so so like like we've said in the past, it turns out seven didn't eat nine. So I guess not. Seven, eight, seven, eight, nine, you know. Yeah, ha, ha, ha. Funny joke. So um, <laughs> the 9 to 5 Mac is pretty sure that they're going to be announcing it this week. So more than likely, if that's the case, if they do announce it, 
you will have already heard about it by the time this podcast comes out. So they're predicting that it could be announced anytime between now and Thursday and then be available for purchase uh, online, obviously, on the uh, on, around the 15th. So <clears throat> this thing is going to oh. be... Wow, yeah, you said soon. You meant soon. Yeah, yeah very soon. Yeah, they, they thought that this was going to come out whenever the new iPads came out, but um, it, it didn't, and they weren't really sure why, but now they've had some leaks of um, beta software coming out for the iPhone that okay. is looks to be from what they can tell looks to be required for some of the features that are supposed to be on this new iPhone SE. Gotcha. Um, but anyways, it's just going to be another low cost iPhone that uh, people can get into, but some of the specs that they put on this thing look, it, they look pretty promising. Um, they're talking about, it's going to have like the a 13 processor, which is the processor from uh, last fall that you saw in all the all the new phones like the iPhone 11, the Pros, and all that, which is a, that's a pretty big deal for a, a sub a sub four hundred dollar phone to come out with uh, a, that big of a processor is awesome. But we'll see. Yeah, we'll that's... have to wait. We'll have to wait and see because I mean it, it's uh it's just a matter of time. I mean they may or may not release it, but right now might be a good time to release it because if people are needing phones and everybody's worried about spending money to release a entry level priced phone that more people can afford, it might be beneficial. Some people will look at it like, oh, well, Apple shouldn't be releasing this stuff during this pandemic. But, you know, they're, they're a business. They got to keep running, uh, got to keep doing what they're doing. So do you have I, any pricing rumors? Any pricing on them? Um, yeah. So they're saying that the 64 gig is going to be three hundred and forty nine dollars. Yeah, so that's. That's pretty cheap. I don't know if that's to me that just seems so cheap for an iPhone with that good of a processor. I will be kind of surprised if it is that cheap. Four hundred dollars seems like a great deal, but three fifty? Wow, that's that's pretty cheap. And if you got that on one of those like um the payment plan things, you know, the no interest things that you can do every month, I mean that would probably uh -huh. only that'd probably only be like eighteen bucks a month for whatever the term is. I mean, you can go through different lengths, but, but man, that's 350 bucks would be awesome for a lot of people. Well, and they almost always have a trade in program. That's and, true. And it usually reaches back farther than you would think. Um, mm. and so, yeah, if you've got, I don't know this, but if you've got a six or six S that you've been hanging on to, you can probably trade it in for something off of 350 you know and so right. that makes it uh that makes it real manageable yeah for sure uh the other leak that i have uh information on is you know the new ipads they came out with that new lidar uh scanner yeah. on the back yeah so apparently uh, a website found a leak inside of the code um this came from concept iphone and um uh, Nine to five Mac actually picked this story up and essentially they just showed the specs of what the iPhone 12 would look like. It's going to have the three camera array that we see right now on the iPhone uh, 11, but it's uh -huh. going to have basically it's, instead of having them off center, like, you know, you have the two lenses and then you have that one that's kind of like down a little bit in between them. It's kind of an odd look. Well, other people had predicted that last year that this little square for the camera bump on the iPhone 11 gives them room to put four cameras in. Well, it's looking like they're going to move all the all the lenses up to the corners of the little square camera bump, and then on the bottom one, they're it's showing that it's a lidar sensor. And on nice. the iPad, the lidar sensor is the same size as a camera lens. So yeah. The, the back of the iPhone 12 could have three cameras and that LiDAR sensor. And this is apparently from an iOS 14 leak. So it could be legit. It makes sense to have that feature on the iPhone just because it would, it, it's, it's their flagship device and why not? And it would probably open up a lot of like AR type technology and also 
um, make some really cool like depth perception uh, like photo stuff. I don't really know all the stuff on that, but it could it could really change the the camera game for the iPhone, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, man, that's super cool. The other thing that I had, uh, which hey, I found, hey, hey, yeah. hey, hey, uh-huh, uh-huh, maybe, uh-huh. maybe you know, uh-huh. <laughs> sorry, like a... maybe how uh, you know a lot of people have dash cams now. Um, maybe they'll create a thing where you can mount your phone to where it faces out your out your front window and it'll link up with apple carplay and it'll drive your car for you <laughs> nice nice that is the actual brains of the car driver <laughs> i'm gonna let somebody else test that first <laughs> uh-huh uh-huh <laughs> all right <laughs> what's your last thing uh the last thing is have you heard of the app uh dark sky no so Dark Sky is, it's a weather app and it's been around for quite a while and a lot of people really, really liked it because I guess like the, you know, the weather channel. Uh-huh. So the weather channel is its own like um, weather place and so is Dark Sky. It's its own weather place. And I guess basically both of those companies pull data from like the global weather data source i'm not sure what it's called but i know there's something out there like that basically it captures data and then you can build your applications to pull that information in and then make your own weather predictions and so that's what the weather channel does and that's what dark sky does and a lot of people have really liked dark sky because they built some really cool algorithms i guess over the last several years where they are actually doing really detailed like prediction of start and end time for rain and so they would be like based off of your location it's going to rain in five minutes and it basically would be right a lot of the time and so they built up a pretty decent following and then um, the app costs about five bucks on the app store but then they just recently went to android and they offered a free app worth with uh, purchases, uh, like in-app purchases. But then Apple threw a loop. They went ahead and they just bought them. <laughs> they, they, bought, <laughs> they bought Dark Sky and shut the Android app off, which <laughs> apparently... Take that, Android. Yeah, yeah it, made, it made a lot of people <laughs> upset. But the big thing about this is, isn't that they just bought this app, it's that... For one, the iPhone weather app will get a ton better over the next year or two because they're going to be able to integrate this instead of using the weather channel. But the the big thing is, is that this is going to affect a lot of other like applications. There's some applications that require that, that really look at dark skies data and they use it within their APIs. So Mm. Some people are kind of worried that this is going to actually cause some issues where they're going to, Apple's just going to say, sorry, you can't use this API anymore. Good luck. You're going to have to find something else. But the other really cool thing that some people are thinking is that maybe Apple will build their own API that you could integrate within your actual iPhone, iPad, Mac OS apps. And one of the big benefits of this is that you're not revealing your location data to anybody. That's one of the dirty secrets about all of these weather apps, like uh, the Weather Channel. It's been known to resell your data uh, uh-huh. by basically you give it location data and it's sitting there tracking you the whole the whole entire time and just right. it knows all that. But if Apple does it, it's it's held by Apple and they only release just a little bit of the information enough information for the app to be able to do what it needs to do um not revealing all of your information so essentially yeah. a whole bunch of apps could install or work with this so-called apple api if they make one for weather and you would never have to give it permission to use your location because that app would never know your location it would just know this cryptic information that apple was basically giving it through its api so that's kind of neat i thought yeah that's cool 
I thought that I thought I've never used Dark Sky because I'm just like I'm not a big enough weather nerd to spend five bucks on an app. Uh huh. But I was kind of excited whenever they uh, bought them because I was like, "Ooh, maybe the app will be free." So, but it's not free yet. Maybe it'll be free at some point. But I bet you what they do is they just build it into their current weather app and just make it better. Yeah, that makes the most sense. <clears throat> But I don't think we'll probably see that until probably iOS 15 because iOS 14 is supposed to be released in September. And that's just too big of a push, I would think, to to drop that into the this upcoming version of iOS. Sure. So. Well, that's cool, that's though. All, yeah. That's all the stuff that I had. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before we do some crazy tech? Nope. That's all I've got. All right, let's do some crazy tech. Crazy tech. This tech is automatic, supersonic, hypnotic, funky, fresh. Work my body so melodic. This tech flows right through my chest. Um, I'm going to guess. I'm going to guess. Um, Missy Elliott. Yeah, actually. <laughs> yes. Featuring Sierra. Um, oh, I would have never have gotten that part. <laughs> 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 oh man well i'm gonna go first this week because i saw something that just it just blew my mind and you and i both watch seth bike hacks and yeah i don't know if you saw the berm peak express episode this week <clears throat> where he bought a five dollar action camera no i haven't watched that one yet but i saw i saw the comparison video out there yeah, it's hilarious. I mean, I'm not going to spoil the $5 action camera for you, but the part that I picked up on, and I am going to spoil this for you, at one point he he took his iPhone 11 and attached it to his chin mount on his full face helmet and went, yeah. down, and went down his trail. And it was amazing, actually. It yeah. was... It it was unreal because you know how the GoPro Hero 8, it like claims that it's got this steady shot and this smoothing and all this stuff that uh -huh. like makes it super smooth. The iPhone was right there with it. And Seth is like, I don't know what I'm looking at at this point. This could be the fact that Apple might have made the best action camera ever, <laughs> which, <laughs> which is kind of, I mean, it's just kind of crazy because... Like I have, I have done stuff with my iPhone before trying to move fast and uh -huh. at least on the iPhone 10 S max and below, it kind of had that like shaky feel. Not, I wouldn't say it was vibrations. It was more like the shutter speed couldn't keep up with like the actual camera itself. So it kind of gave that wavy look whenever you're moving uh -huh. quick. Well, on, on his phone, it didn't, it was just like pretty clear i mean it was it was actually amazing i wonder how much of it matters that it was attached to his head because your, that's what i wonder too your your neck automatically works as a bit of a gimbal like mm -hmm. because that's how your eyes work i mean and so i wonder i wonder how much it matters that it's a chin mount instead of like a chest mount yes. but like but also could you imagine being at two rivers and seeing someone coming down the hill with a freaking iPhone strapped to their chin? <laughs> it's a wind deflector. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah, right. You get, you, you get minus two on speed. <laughs> minus two on speed. And also, the first time you crash, you'd cry because that's a real expensive action camera. That's exactly what Seth was saying. He's like, please don't fall out. Please don't fall out. Please don't fall out. <laughs> <laughs> but he did it. He went through all the jumps and everything, and he did it. But yeah, that's awesome. So what uh, what kind of crazy tech do you have? Uh, I have a product called Switch, and it's spelled S-W-Y-T-C-H. Um, so we've been talking about e-bikes the whole time we've had this podcast, but a little bit the last couple of weeks. Um, 
and I think because of that, because of all of my Googling for the show notes and everything else, um, I've been getting different ads than I normally would. <laughs> um, but this Switch, uh, they're getting ready to release a second version of it. The first version was like a Kickstarter campaign, and those have all been sent out. But what it is, is it's a, a battery pack and brains that mounts to your handlebars. And then depending on what kind of bike you're riding, they send you a front wheel that has a motor built into the front wheel hub. Huh. And so <clears throat> the the uh, the battery pack has a line that runs down. I'm not really sure how everything connects, but um, anyway, it's a it's an assist that runs on your front wheel instead of your back wheel. And they're getting ready to come out with a second version where the battery pack and the brains are a little bit smaller, a little bit lighter, um, but it's still like the same technology. And so I just thought it was crazy that like, yeah, we send you this, uh, this kit that involves a, you, you know, a new front wheel. <laughs> yeah. So, so you just basically tell them what size of wheel that you are currently running and uh -huh. they can, you can, you hook it up to your current wheel or it's a new wheel. It's a new wheel. Yeah. Okay. So you, you know, take your tire and tube or tire off of whatever, whatever bike you're riding. Cause they had it on, you know, those little tiny wheels that go on fold up bikes. They had it. Um, <laughs> there was one guy that was riding one of those, um, Oh, what are they called? Like those 1840s, huge wheel in the front. Oh, yeah. with the, the, the little a pe penny farthing. A penny farthing. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, they they even had it on one of those, which I'm sure you can't buy <laughs> straight from. <laughs> but for for you know, argument's sake, look, we even made it work on this. <laughs> um, but yeah, so any 700C or you know. 29 or 27 and a half mountain bike like you can make any bike an e-bike wow that's pretty cool i mean if you just wanted to get an e-bike to help you get back and forth between work or go to the grocery store or you know just have a little extra fun i mean that seems like a pretty simple upgrade yeah and the fold-up bikes like if you wanted to throw it on one of those, they break down really quickly. And I've done this before, which our buses around town here have bike racks on the front, mm -hmm. but it's only got room for uh, either two or four. And so, you know, depending on how many people are trying to jump on, that could fill up. And so if you had a folding bike that, you know, for me, I need to ride about six miles to get to the, the furthest south bike stop. Or mm -hmm. a bus stop. Mm -hmm. So if I could take a folding bike six miles and have an e-assist on it and then take the other six miles to work, like that's that's totally doable, you know? Yeah, that would um, that'd be a pretty good deal. I mean, save you a heck of a lot of money on gas. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know. I thought it was a cool concept. So do they give some prices on that? I don't. If I find something, because I just watched that ad and took down a bunch of notes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll look for something for the show notes. And so you guys can check that out and, and see. Because I don't know if it's going to just be like, if it's another Kickstarter campaign and mm -hmm. you have to pre-buy basically, or if um, if they've got production deals now where they can just make a thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, the cool thing is it's their second one, right? So, I mean, they worked out a lot of kinks in the first one. So their second one's probably going to be, I would say, pretty decent. I mean, if they're already on their second one, that means the first one was probably decently successful. Right. Yeah. Successful enough to, yeah, I'm with yeah. you. That's pretty cool. I, you know me, yeah. I, I am, I am all in on these e-bike things. I, I would love to have one. It would it yeah. just, I just think it's super cool. It'd be fun. Yeah. Well, that's all I have for this week. How about you? That is it. Well, want to tell them where they can find us? Yeah. You can find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Lunchtime Tech Talk. You can find us on Twitter.com at Lunchtime Tech T1. You can find us on the internet 
uh, our website, lunchtimetechtalk.com. There you can browse show notes, listen to old episodes, send us an email. You can find us on patreon.com slash lunchtimetechtalk. You can leave us a dollar or five or mm-hmm. however much you want. <laughs> and uh, and there's some, uh, there's some additional content out there that's blocked unless you're willing to pay. Um, you can find me on Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. I have been on Instagram a little bit more lately. Uh, I have this buddy who has a YouTube channel that's kind of blowing up. <laughs> and when he, when he tweets to Twitter, uh, it doesn't do a good job because it's coming from Instagram. And so I have to go to Instagram to look at it. Um, so anyway, that's true. It's true. He's, yeah. he's trying to, he's trying to suck me in. But anyway, you can find me on those platforms at MSU Mac. That's M S U M A C C. Mike, where you at? Oh, you can find me on Twitter at run underscore bike underscore Mike, unless my friend Chad comes through successfully and gets me. Oh my gosh. Twitter yes, handle. Let me talk about run this. Bike Mike. <laughs> so I went out and looked because everybody knows that all your stuff is run by Mike, except for Twitter which is yes. run underscore bike underscore Mike. And so yes. I tweeted the guy this weekend because he hasn't tweeted since 2017. I know, that's, I know. That's Killing three me. years. And so I sent him a tweet. I couldn't direct message him because he doesn't have that turned on. Uh, but I sent him a tweet and I said, hey, my buddy has this YouTube channel. It's kind of a big deal. I didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> kind of a big deal. <laughs> But he has this YouTube channel. It's called Run Bike Mike. All of his social media is the same except Twitter. Anyway, you'd give it up. And I haven't heard back yet. So. Oh, man. We'll gonna see. Have to, maybe, maybe if we don't hear anything from him, maybe there are powers that be at Twitter that we can email and or maybe. tweet. Sorry, God, that that's probably not going to get me the uh, Twitter handle at all if I email them. <clears throat> but uh, I wonder if there's like, probably not. <laughs> I wonder if there's processes because you know we read that article, uh, what yeah. like six or seven months ago that they were going to be giving up handles that haven't tweeted in a while. Yeah, so there's got to be a process. Yeah. So, anyways, that is me at Twitter at run underscore bike underscore Mike, unless we hear otherwise, and uh, everywhere else is run bike Mike, and don't forget. Go out to my YouTube channel. It's uh, it's it's kind of bit, kind of fun right now. I've got a squirrel picnic table out there. I love that video. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, that one was pretty fun. It actually got featured on uh, uh, a website called DIY and Crafts, but it was oh yeah, the, it wasn't actually the big one that goes out to the public. It was the one that goes out to the creators, and it got put on there. And they don't they don't put every video that comes to them on there. I probably submitted the last probably six or seven uh, build videos to them, and they haven't yeah. put them on there. This one they have, um, and uh, yeah, that was kind of exciting to see it actually on that page. So very. But anyways, cool. yeah. So check out the video at Run Bike Mike, and then hop over to Instagram Run Bike Mike, and you can get uh, your measurements if you want to yeah. build your own. Yeah. If yeah, you got your sure. own Jerry. <laughs> all right well i guess we will talk to you guys next week yeah see you then all right see ya bye bye